Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today I want to talk to you about performance-based lead generation deals, which lead to 20K plus net profit weeks. Let's dive in. I've literally just finished a webinar with Lawrence Howlett, who's one of my Flexible members. And what he's done is leveraged a performance-based deal with his clients combined with AdWords or Google Ads search, AdWords, that's a little bit old school, but Google Ads search in order to be able to get them to pay for the ad spend. And then he takes a slice of every sale or commission or whatever happening on the back end, which means he has zero risk, okay? Within this webinar, he's gonna show you and tell you exactly how he's done it, how it works and what it looks like. It's super exciting. It reminds me of a deal I did with a lawyer over here in the UK, probably about seven or eight years ago now where I did this exact thing. I negotiated a deal where he paid us six figures up front for exclusivity. And then he was paying us uh, between 10 and 20,000 pounds per week in ad spend to be able to de deliver leads for them. And we got paid on the back end of each deal. Okay, there was an upfront payment, they covered all the ad spend, and we also got paid a slice of every um, sale off the back of that, which was just an incredible, incredible deal. And it's exactly the same thing. We we're using an advertorial funnel at this point in time, but um, Lawrence is using Google Ads and it's super powerful because these are intent-based leads. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now. Uh, the webinar is fantastic. Please enjoy and I'll speak to you soon. All right, so a little bit of back history. Um, so I started doing performance-based lead gen probably about six or seven years ago. As I said in my email today, one of the biggest breakthroughs I had was when I was able to take the risk away from myself with paper lead. And it kind of, no one taught me it. It was just kind of a natural prog progression, right? We were able to generate leads. Our clients weren't, but I didn't want to take the risk because we all know that some of these clients struggle with contact rates and all of that type of stuff. So I started working with some big claims companies and debt companies, and I just went up and saw them in their office and said, listen, guys, it's kind of working, but it isn't. I don't really want to take the risk. You've got deeper pockets than me. Can we just do something? And all of a sudden they were like, yeah, no problems. Just invoice us every week. Like so sometimes this was 10, 20, 30,000 uh, pounds a week for ad spend. And then we'll pay you when a conversion or when a sale happens or when different ver uh, different stages of the sale happened, okay? If it was a sale all the way at the end, which sometimes would take weeks, we'd get more, but sometimes they would pay per appointment or per pack out, as they say in the industry. And it, it really um, you know, transformed the way I did business. And uh, Lawrence joined Flexible. It must have been, what, 18 months ago or something, Lawrence? Yeah, about that. And... Um, I was chatting to them the other day and he's taken this kind of uh, method of transacting with clients. And instead of throwing like Facebook ads or advertorial type leads at clients, he's able, he's totally figured out how to do it with, with search, right? Which to be honest with you, we dabbled with, but we could never get to work at scale. All right. Um, and for some of you on the call today, you've probably tried search. You've probably seen, CPCs up around 30, 40, sometimes 30, 50, $50 even. And you're like, this is just never going to work for me. Um, but one thing we did do back in the day was we were able to pull the data through from the client CRM and see which um, leads were closing, which um, type of ads or creative or which audiences led to those sales, right? Which meant we were able to feed that back into our system and go after those type of targets rather than just going broad or whatever. And that really helped lead quality. And we're able to also track traffic source and stuff like that. But Lawrence has taken this to the next level. And I really wanted to bring him on today um, so he could explain how he's doing it, what this looks like. And um, yeah, here we are. So That's Lawrence, fun. great to have you, mate. Have I given a fairly clear indication of what we're talking about here today? Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, you know a great yeah. start, and um, yeah, it's it's 
you know, it's been it's been a journey for for uh, the eighteen months since you know joining up with with Flexible and um, you know I, I you know although we, we've, you know we've got to you know ten x growth in those those eighteen months which is you know outrageous in in some respects. Um, it's uh, uh, there's a ton of lessons learned in that period. Um, so yeah, it'd be good to share some of them today with the uh, the peeps that are on. Good stuff. All right. So before we get started, we usually get two or three panelists that would want to come on and ask questions or the chatty types. So now, if you want to do that, put your hand up and that will um, choose you randomly. And at the end or during the webinar, you can ask questions or whatever. And by the way, we will have a Q&A at the end. So if you have got questions, just type in the chat box and we'll get to you. All right. Okay. So I guess we're, we're good to go, Lawrence. You've got some slides, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll um I'll just share my screen. Hopefully we can uh you see like the full screen. Is that good? Yep. Sweet. Um so you, you sort of did your your intro. Everyone knows who you are anyway. So we'll just uh we'll skip uh skip through this. Skip me. Uh, skip you. Have have a little bit about me. So um uh yeah, just alluded earlier, 10x growth up to 2.5 million on for about 3.5 this year. Uh, moredemand.io is the is the agency. Um, let me just uh, change this. Sorry, something just popped up right in front of me. Um, here we go. Uh, so we specialist in PPC, Google Ads. That's like pretty much all we do. We've just recently, I've I think even Manuel is on maybe on this call. Uh, he's my Facebook guy. So he's he's only joined in the last three months, and we're sort of playing with uh with some uh some facebook stuff as well but this this has all been off the back of google ads um and we work in like the highest cpc arenas you know we're talking insurance protection claims uh you know we're talking the high cpc stuff and then uh when all that uh as i'll go through later went to um went to shit with a uh with a few account bands um we had to to change tack so um mm. i think you know you you called me the one man lead generation machine at, at, at one point and um you know yes. you can do this with a micro team exactly so yeah it's been amazing watching the growth and how you've done this but what is important i think i want to let everyone know that it must have been about a year ago i got a slack message from you and you were literally on your knees you were thinking that this whole thing is over and you were done and you didn't want to go anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, just get through, just get through this stage. And I promise you things are going to get better. Can you just explain what happened then? Because I, I, I've noticed this over and over again, just when you think you're not quite there, bad shit's happening. And then all of a sudden there's a big breakthrough and good stuff happens after that. So tell us a bit about what happened there. Yeah. Um, so so it, I, I come to it late, later on, but uh, just, yeah, just sort of go straight into it. It um, uh, I had a load of account bans. So I, I uh, set up some uh, accounts in an incorrect way. And um, that led to um, to multiple accounts being banned and literally boom, overnight, um, I no longer have a business, i.e., you know, people are phoning me the next day going, where are my leads? Um, and, you know, I've not got one person phoning me saying, where are my leads? I've got every single client that I've spent the last nine months previous to that signing up. Um, so it was, uh, you know, Ouch. yeah, it was a big, big problem. Um, and, you know, I just we had a, a fairly new newborn in, in the house. We, you know, moved house. We got huge mortgage and you know you can just imagine what sort of uh situation just after you've been riding the curve of sort of oh we're going up and up then it's like just rug under your feet straight away and um yeah a, a big ouch but i'll i'll sort of talk about more about why that happened and you know what what i did around that um so uh so yeah, just wanted to so what are you going to get out of today for sticking around to the end um my journey to the 2.6 um the big change that i made to go to 20 grand profit weeks that we're doing now um what i think is the old ppl versus the new and then some you know the three biggest changes that i made um in that last 12 months to um you know to to smash through to seven seven multiple seven figures um and then we'll just q a uh cool 
so uh yeah let's get let's get started with the with the, the journey and more importantly you know how you might be able to um to replicate it so um you saw me djing in that front and it, and it all started when i met the man in the middle with the t-shirt off called dave at a rave in ibiza and um you know i'll i'll be honest i uh i i blagged it to start with you know my lead generation journey with him i i blagged it but um you know don't we all uh you know i said we can do What's so quiet yeah, so he, he's uh, he's still my client, still my original, original client. He's the only person that I will ever have on a retainer because he's looked after me <laughs> through thick and thin. And um, I'm stuck by him. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, wow. met him at rave. So um, yeah, so we've, we've had some some great times together. But it's just interesting, like where where your clients come from. It's not all having to do it on LinkedIn. You know, you can talk to people outside of that. Um, but so so initially he was my my first client in will writing so we we still do you know um still help him generate hundreds of will writing leads every single day and that that really came through getting hyper focused on offers messaging testing and persuasive copywriting for and I'm I'm a dyslexic so for for me to be able to write copy as a dyslexic is like you know, my my English teacher would be having kittens if she knew the way that I could write now and and you know how how I use persuasive copy and you know what I know about language and and then you know obviously the analytical side in Google Ads etc. So I I just got hyper focused in there and came up with my you know the Tim Ferriss of your your own MBA as he he says in um in uh his his four hour work week and tools for Titans is you know just read all these books read all, all this stuff then go then I was like this is before getting into flexible by the way and um and learning then how to implement um so once I'd done all this sort of stuff uh you know we, we generated tens of thousands of will writing leads over the the last sort of five years for um uh for dave at the rave and um and we repeated the same offer again and again and again because once we hit an offer it just sticks it's not like facebook or other platforms where you get ad fatigue you don't tend to get ad fatigue in in google ads so once you've nailed it once it sticks and you know we've had the same offer for five years now and it still produces 200 plus leads every single day from google ads in will writing um wow. yeah and then you know that that's feeding a team of uh i think they've got a team of 60 to 80 people and that's feeding every single one of their mouths every single one of their employees you know through all their management that's like there's there's one other lead generator that supplies them as well and um yeah that's uh it's built a whole business and they're, they're a million pound a month turnover business so um you know it's uh once you get it it sticks um so th the whole point of this was you know i was building up retainer clients managing their ad spend um but i couldn't afford the financial risk of the the paper lead model like a lot of us when we're first getting started up we're like you know how can i afford 500 pound a day or you know even 100 pound a day or you know whatever it is to to really go out and and generate the leads that that we need to um or that we say that we can on the calls that we're having with with clients and and take that financial risk so uh the problem was we're building up those retainer clients and I only retained one, uh, the retainer clients, they were literally killing me. So, you know, I was, uh, I was their servant. They were like, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? Can you do that? You know, every single thing was like, it was all on me. They thought I was like the, the guy, the go-to guy for absolutely everything. You know, can I do their email marketing? And of course, when you're trying to, you know, first start out, you're the yes man. And, and I was just like, this, this, this is crazy. You, you know, you can't can't came can't keep going like this. So that was problem one when I then came across, you know, yourself and and joined the the flex course and and the blueprint. And I was like, okay, let's um, you know, let's get into um, uh, let's fast forwarded a little bit uh, too far. Yeah. So within um, within a couple of months of joining Flexible, we built up you know some really good clients on the paper lead model. I had a bit of money behind me because I'd done the retainer stuff. And then 
uh, this boom. This is what we were talking about earlier. You know, it, the rug was pulled under me, um, and it you it was literally like that in my office where you know i was uh there were some tears shed of um you know i've just you can imagine i've sacked all these retainer clients they're all, they've all been sacked there's no there's no income from them and everything was moved over to pp um paper lead and then i've got all of that pulled from under me and it yeah it's just um just crazy times uh so uh things had to change fast with a newborn you know uh i didn't have a a lot of money to risk at that point i just moved house you know all of this stuff was piling on top of me and that's when you said look lawrence if you can just get through the next couple of months you know good things are on their way so i reevaluated completely um and fast forward to now with hundreds of a b tests under my belt three hundred thousand leads in the last 12 months um, you know, in competitive arenas, in some less, you know, competitive arenas that are just literally blue oceans of being able to go out there and, and generate leads in that people aren't touching. Um, you know, we're doing doing 20k profit a week off just one one campaign. This is the, you know, the screenshot that you sent out. I've even, um, you know, put my Barclays account on the right there. So you can see, you know, the payments coming in. And that's week in, week out now, um, you know, really, really steady steady business and that wasn't even like that at the the start of this year so there's there's what i've done in the last what we now september cry you know the last nine months is is really take that from probably you know grand a week profit and just smash you know smash the crap out of it in in this this sort of year um and uh you know I'm, I'm definitely enjoying the air miles so um those that don't have an american express and getting the avios points and uh you know enjoying that go get one because it's um you know definitely uh definitely worth doing um so the question is you know how did i do it and um more importantly how can you get some of that um so um yeah you know i think the the first thing to go over before going into that is you know i've I've been there in terms of the crazy high cpls that are just killing your bank account that keep hitting you for 500 quid every single time you're looking at the amex statement it's like 500 pound here 500 pound there you know it's all just draining out of your account and you're like i'm just not hitting the cpls that i need to because my pages convert at six percent you know, uh, which is, you know, never going to, never going to do it. And that, you know, I've had, look, August the 4th, 2022, my pages were converting at, at 6%. So, you know, it's never going to win. And then the lead quality issue as well. You know, you've got clients moaning at you that you've got terrible contact rate, poor conversions. And this is all because we're building up to the, you know, to the change here is, um, you know, uh, Oh, the other thing I've had actually is clients that don't pay on a paper lead model. Um, and I've still got one bastard that owes me a lot of bloody money. So, um, you know, I think we've all been there uh, and, uh, you know, got got burnt there. So, th again, this this transition just gets rid of that. It's, you know, it's not your problem anymore. Um, one more thing. Sorry, I've been hacked and uh got mi5 involved because they thought it was part of an international cyber crime. Just a little side side thing that we can uh talk about later on but basically i've been through the mill right I've, I've had everything thrown at me um so we got through it got stronger more profitable than ever so you know if you're in the slightest bit interested still it'd be lovely to see a hand raise in the in the chat and you know i'm going to show you you know how we're um how we you know got to that got to that point that we're doing it now and we've, we've 10x and we're you know it's a bit harder to 10x 2.5 million to go to 25 in 12 months so you know i'm happy to add another another mill on this this year um and i am a dj so you know in the words of fat boy slim we're in the right place right here right now and i'm going to do one more cheesy line mm. because i love this stuff um you know and in the words of celine dion you can do it all by myself um because uh, <laughs> you know i told you i was a dj so um uh oh my wife would cringe the shit out of <laughs> she was watching the video right now. <laughs> oh dear so this this is the the old way versus the new way uh so old way we had a um uh, a cost per lead deal and we were stuck 
providing low quality leads due to the glass ceiling effect of cost per lead and you're always fighting against the client because your your goals are a, a misaligned so i'm going to go into what that exactly means and that that glass ceiling but the new way that i'm now operating is performance deals um they unlock you know huge profits ten, you know with 10 x um the most important thing though is you're in the same boat rowing in the same direction towards the sale so with a performance deal you're no longer going well i want to i want to keep those crappy keywords in there because that's where i get all my margin from you're actually going well no i get paid on a sale so i need to row towards the sale and and the the cost per lead isn't the the right metric to be to be looking at who cares what the cost per lead is if we're getting a positive roi off that lead it just it's just like it's a non metric um so and plus the fact it's like the easiest sell going it's it's a no brainer deal for the client they're just you know they just love this stuff um so the old way i was doing paper lead or cost per lead and now i on performance deals so back end deals before sure. deals, paper performance whatever you want to call it so how do you position you might talk about it in a sec but how do you position the deal for the client for, to make it sound so attractive to them so <clears throat> there's there's a couple of ways depending where i see i want my risk to land so if I'm going into a new industry, so we're, we're, we've launched recently in solar, for example, um, I wanted the risk to sit with me because I wanted a bigger performance upside. So I literally go in and, you know, I've, I've now got the the sort of funds to do this. I've gone in and said that I want to work with the best solar companies in the UK to my sales guy, go and set up meetings with the best people out there and I will give them leads for free and i will you know take a a big slice of the um the, the total um uh you know revenue that's that's from from those uh, solar installations so we we've worked out our, our cost per acquisition we know what our margin is and then if they hit the numbers that they say they do we know we're we're all making good money so it's a no brainer for them that's if i want to take the risk and put the money up front those that uh those that I go to on a ad spend plus um, uh, commission or or lead fee um, or, or whatever we we set it up at, but basically the client spends the ad spend. They're a little bit more difficult to get across the line because obviously they're taking the risk. But the whole thing versus a retainer or you know a, a cost per lead is one. I explain well, you know, are you buying leads at the moment? did you know these are the bad practices of lead generators and they do this, this, and this? Um, two, if you move to us, we don't get paid a penny until you're in profit. So we normally position it where we get a commission after they're profitable. So not even on a sale. We always try and hinge it towards profit so that we go, right, here, and I'm talking gross profit, you know, um, literally revenue minus marketing costs. I'm not, you know, they're, they're staff costs and operational is all their things so this is just like gross profit so then we'll we'll go right can we um come in and get x percent of that that profit you know once we're into profit and that that's been a really easy sell for me because nobody else has been doing that to the companies that i've spoken with they've typically been saying right well we'll charge you either 10 percent of ad spend or we'll charge you a retainer or you've got to buy leads off us or you've got to to um you know pay us uh, ad spend plus a fee per lead or a fee per sale what i'm saying is you don't pay us until you're profitable and it's um that seems to be going down quite nicely um but obviously i tell you before uh, you sorry yeah sorry there's lots of questions about the percentages here um mm. i know it's going to vary but can you give us an idea um depends if i'm taking the risk or not so if i'm taking the risk i'll want north of 50 percent um and that's so that's after the campaign's paid for itself so i we um let's do some fag paper figures we've got a thousand pounds worth of ad costs we sell two thousand quids worth of stuff the first thousand pounds goes back to the campaign and then we split the thousand pound profit and i'll want at least 
fifty percent of that profit. So I would I would collect fifteen hundred pounds in that case, and they would get five hundred pounds, but they've had no ad costs, no marketing, no customer acquisition costs whatsoever. So I collect the ad spend plus the percentage of the profit. Um, if I'm not risking the ad spend, it's going to be you, you're going to be down at like the twenty five percent of the profit because the the risk is all on their side um that's not to say you can't go and you know swing it and try and get as much as you can you know that's 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 what business is all about but um yeah that, that's typically what i would set up but oh. you want the campaign to pay for itself and agree with the client that the campaign is going to pay for itself first so if we spend a thousand pounds and then have a revenue of a thousand pounds. None, neither of us make money, but the thousand pounds comes back to me to pay for the ad spend. So we've we've had a good crack at it. No one's made any money, but you know that's it. Some some you win, some you don't. Cool. Um, okay, let me just click on here. Cool. Um, so yeah, the 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 old way of optimizing a Google campaign would be optimizing for cost per lead because we know. We're selling on a cost per lead, so we're stuck mixing, you know, lower end crap leads, you know, stuff that doesn't convert as well on um, a cost per lead deal because that's where our margin is versus, you know, the keywords that we might be overpaying for because we know that's all that the client converts on. Um, you know, downstream, that's where all the sales are coming from. So the problem with a cost per lead deal is we are, in the name of it, we're our cost center. So all of the language is cost, cost per lead, cost, 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 everything. So it's like literally as soon as you walk in, you're a cost. When you optimize for PPL, profit per lead, you're a profit center. So the language has changed immediately. You're talking about profit straight away. So you're focused on what drives the money wheel round, that which is sales. So you're both in the same boat. You're both looking for profit and you're both looking for sales. So you've, you've all of a sudden shif shifted the position from cost to profit, which is just you know a, a language shift that changes the game again when you're you know pitching this stuff on on um, whoop, what the hell happened there? Hang on, we've gone back to Celine Dion here. We've got a problem in the mix. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, you know, a, a language change that is, is huge. And it's also a way of optimizing the Google ads account that you're focused on. Uh, you're focused on what the profit per lead is, what the ROAS, the return on ad, um, spend is for each of those keywords or devices or audiences, or, you know, whatever the, the different, um, particulars of, of the Google ads accounts we're looking to optimize. So, uh, that is a huge shift to the way that you're optimizing um again the old way in a cost per lead deal you're burning clients you're stuck doing small 50 lead trials or 10 lead trials or 25 and you know they're complaining about quality straight out of the boat or straight out of the bat and um you know they're, they're literally expecting a mature campaign when you're only starting out and you want to hide that fact but the lead quality is not there and you just it's just a nightmare um versus when you're talking about a performance partnership it is you're retaining partners so it is a long you're getting into this for the long term i always talk about and i'm looking out the window now because it's pissing it down i'm uh, always talking about weathering some storms together so you know we're, we're talking about we're going to get into bed together we're going to do this thing over a a longer period of time you know this is a, a three month thing to build together um and the conversation is about the conversation changes from instead of complaining about leads to what conversations um so the conversions and how we can improve those and you know we, we can just share data so much because we're now partners we're not hiding our our margin or our cost per lead we're having a transparent conversation because we're you know, we're all driving towards profit. We know we, we're on a uh, profit share of 50 50 each. So there's no point hiding any data. Whereas on a cost per lead, it's all like, well, no, I'm not showing you that because you'll see all my margins and then you'll want, you know, to bring my cost per lead down. So it gets rid of all that crap. Um, which, you know, is, is what because I, I can't bear like the, you know, the, cloak and daggers is the wrong word but you know the sort of mystery of you know i'm not going to share this or that it's just it's not conducive to um to long-term business um and the, you know all of that leads to the fact that you blame the client 
So it must be your sales team. You're not dialing enough. Have you tried this, that, the other um, in a cost per lead deal versus the new way that, that I do things where when I onboard a partner, we go through a partner success program. That's a, you know, a set of, um, uh, a, a series of things that we do. We, we look at, you know, their dial strategy. We look at their, um, outreach. Are they outreaching over WhatsApp, SMS? Um, I don't even bother with email. So it's like WhatsApp and SMS, what message are you sending? What hand raises are you getting from the clients? What are you sending to no contacts? We go through all of this stuff <clears throat> to make sure that they can work the leads in, in a proper manner. Um, you know, are they dialing? Um, are they doing a morning, afternoon and evening? Are they doing a weekend shift? You know, how many dial attempts do they do? All of that stuff um, goes into our partner success program. And that has transformed the way our leads are being worked by our partners. Um, because you'll, you'll be so surprised when you actually go into a business. And I've, I've, I've done this where my leads are going in, you know, sort of 40, 50 leads a day. And I'll go in and sit in the call center and I'll be like, what, what did they just say to that person? Or what, what text did you just send? And I'm like, why are you sending that? You know, so we, we, we've learned now that that needs to be changed and we need to help control that because a lot of lead buyers are not used to that. They're used to maybe referral business or, you know, they're getting business off checker trade or it's like it's completely different lead. And the way that you work it is completely different as well. Um, so, you know, that's that's really, really helped um, improve performance. Um, so yeah, this next slide has been a bit of a game changer for me. This is more about entering new markets. So this is um, this is something that I've uh, I've only sort of realised in the last six months actually. So I used to copy competitors. We used to go to the ad library, spy through, rip off the ads, rip off the landers, you know, reword stuff. Um, and then you don't know if they're oh hello, someone's put the fifty p in the meter. Hang on, two secs. There we go. <laughs> I've got a sensor on the light. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, you're ripping off um, uh, their their pages, but you don't know if they're in the middle of an A-B test. You don't know how that page performs. And, the, you know, the problem is basically, um, you know, he who cacks the highest uh, wins. So um, it, it basically means who can afford the highest cost per acquisition wins because you've got more margin. So you're able to acquire more customers. So, when I was copying competitors, it was just like, I'm only as good as what they're doing versus actually testing the market and asking them, having some budget up front to ask the market what they want. So, and then, then you build that. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science, but it's, it's a simple thing of, you know, what would you like to do? Take the example of solar, um, put a simple landing page up with a few questions and, you say, what would you like to do? Would you like to calculate your savings, find a local installer, get a free quote? Um, which one do you think got clicked the most? Which one? I've got no idea. Yeah. So um, calculate my savings was 73% of the clicks. So mm -hmm. instantly I knew that <clears throat> the way that we build the campaign and position all of the landing pages etc is all got to be around savings and calculating like how much am I going to save then from there we can then take them to the next step of like right now you've calculated your savings you're going to save 500 quid a year a month whatever it is um we can then take them down the the next step which might be do you now want to get a price for the installation um <clears throat> So yeah, that, that was based on um, social traffic. Um, the results would be different, for example, for solar installers. So if someone's on Google searching for, you know, solar installers, they might not want to calculate their savings. So just if, you, if you're only running social traffic, don't go out there and think, right, you can just translate that straight into Google because the translation is not going to work because in Facebook, you're a direct response. You're interrupting someone's day versus someone that's got intent. They're already thinking of the thing. They're going to find the thing online. You've just got to present it in front of them. So um, it actually allows you to test very quickly because you're already, you're already understanding what, 
they want because they're searching for it. You can literally see the word that's in their head. So um, it's it's um, yeah, it's it's a lot easier. So the point of that was to test out the intent. What what key like for example, if they're searching just generically for solar, like what do most people want from that? It might be a calculator. It might be an in, you know find a local installer. Unless you test that, you you're just wasting money. So very quickly test, you know, you only need a few hundred quid, test it, find out, and then build that thing. Um, Does that mean you, so if they come back with, so if you're bidding on broad terms like solar and you do your tests and they see that 73% want to calculate their savings, then you'll continue to bid on those broad terms, but you'll have a savings landing page rather than a find an installer landing page. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll, <clears throat> we'll build, um, unique offers or unique like um laser focused landing pages we call them um based on the intent plus the research that we've done so we'll go right here's this broad thing solar um the intent is calculator let's build a unique offer around that um you know the i don't know the quickest calculator on the market you know what whatever it is we come up with um or you know find out how much you can save immediately online or you know whatever we come up with is the unique offer and then we we surround that with as much um uh trust building elements as we can so guarantees social proof etc on our landing pages to then get those people to do that thing that they're that we that we know they're looking for and then we'll try and you know push them on further down the funnel um so yeah the old way was basically you i don't know if you've ever played blackjack in a casino but you can play behind someone and put your money behind them and you're basically just you're at their mercy um so if you're copying competitors right now you're at their mercy you don't know if they're running an a b test you don't know how much they're spending you don't know this that and the other so it's a it's a complete waste of time and money looking at them you're better spending that time and money doing a test and then applying that to the search intent of the keyword um oh. so yeah broad landing pages versus laser focused we, we alluded to that so you know instead of having a um get your free quote, which might might be one focused landing page, but typically people, you know, they come into Google ads initially and they'll just have a free quote page. It's like, this is where you get your six percents from, you know, versus something, um, you know, that's laser focused on a, on a test that we know is, you know, they want a calculator, you know, an equity release calculator, or they want to see some rates or they want to do, you know, something like that. Um, you know, even with uh, roofing, you know, you might want to know, um, you know, how how much is my square meterage on my roof? You know, I'm I'm just you know pulling out things here, but um, it's just giving that user exactly what they want on a landing page that uses the language that they've either searched for or you've looked up on, um, you know, uh, review sites, etc., to get that language, and then just giving them that. It's, it's, it's not any more difficult than that. And, you know, that's led to a 45%, you know, conversion rate. So I was at like six and you can see like, this is the last, what, a uh, few days, 30 days or whatever. Um, you know, this one particular landing page for this particular thing that we're doing, um, you know, six grand spent 45% conversion rate. And you can see I'm on a, I'm on a 27 pound average cost per click there. So I can't mess about with a low performing landing page because you know 10% I'm going to be at 270 quid a lead um versus you know where I am now at, at 60 quid a lead and you know I can make I can make money from that um I can't if my page converts at 10% um <clears throat> so again old way paying per lead you 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 know you've got this um you sell the lead to the client and you know you sort of never contact that lead again so you're you're creating the lead you're selling it to the client and then you you never as the brand that's created it um contact that again so you're leaving loads of money on the table versus building a brand that people know like and trust and then giving that customer a lifetime of service so if they come into one of my brands like money saving advisors um i want 
to not only service that customer in terms of introducing them to a broker or an intermediary, or, you know, if they come to my solar site, um, hooking them up with, uh, you know, a, um, a relevant installer, but that's my client as well. That, that lead is my client. That what I then do is I lease that lead to the client, my client, my partner for a, a, a period of time for them to work that lead, uh, without being, um, introduced to any other business or having another product or service put in front of them after that period then that's m my customer to go and say right well you've you know you've come in on a um a this that or the other um so you know solar for example would you like spray foam installation or would you like you know a, a different home service you know are you looking to update your alarm or have you have you heard about these new wi-fi cameras or you know whatever um but you've already paid to acquire that customer. So that customer, then you should be, you know, helping out for a lifetime if you can, you know, so you, you won't with all of them, of course, but it's basically about stretching that LTV of, of the customer that you've already um, <clears throat> paid to, um, uh, to acquire. Obviously, if you're building stuff in, in uh, your client's name or your client's brand, you can't do that. Um, but that's uh, that's where you know building your own brand, you can retain that that customer with the right you know right contracts. And it's all about being open and transparent with your your partners as well. You know, this isn't something that I would back. Yeah, sure. So most of the time, you're doing this through your own brand, right? Uh, we we do um, probably like sixty percent through our own brand. I'd say and the other 40 through their own, their own ad account, their own landing, their own website. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but interestingly, it might not be in their brand. It might be a trading that we've come up with together. So for example, um, comparison sites typically work better than um, non-comparison sites, like just a normal branded site. So even with a, a client that I'm working with at the moment, we've come up with a, a comparison site where they can compare a range of products and we've that is a trading name of my clients and that's the the brand that we launched together um so we've, we've created a new ad account we've created a new brand new domain name i own the domain name i own the website it's you know i own all of that um uh part of it and that's my sort of um uh safety net that that you know, although that's, you know, we, we're using it just for him, but, you know, I've built it. So, so again, you know, it's just making sure that neither partner's got each other over a barrel and that you can, you know, you can truly work in a partnership. Um, so, uh, so yeah, about 40% are set up that way. And then some, uh, you know, you've just got, um, direct to their, to their brand. Um, and it's all about testing, you know, I've, I've literally got a post-it note on my desk, I'll always be testing, um, and it's uh, it's something that I've had written there for you know a long time, and I'll test you know does brand A versus brand B you know direct to their brand that they've come up with you know A one roofing versus you know Yorkshire compare Yorkshire roofing dot co dot uk you know which works better um, you'll yeah you'll soon soon find out with a test. Oh. Um, so uh, another thing that came out of out of this is, you know, in the in the old way, I was using expensive freelancers. So this isn't so much about cost per lead versus performance, but this is more how I was doing what I'm doing now is, um, you know, expensive freelancers or all of these copywriters, designers, website builders. I was, you know, building everything pretty bespokely and, um, it was you bug testing all this time and it, oh, it's a technical nightmare um even though i'm a developer of 15 years so i used to own a web design agency so i'm a i'm a techie you know and i was like right we're gonna build you know build everything versus the new way of um utilizing ai to write you know ad copy using templates using uh notion to coach my offshore team of, of vas and and you know um that and it, it just frees up my time to do you know things like this work on commercial deals craft the offers and the do the data and um, analysis piece and i think that's where you know anyone can sort of 
import a, a template, <clears throat> excuse me, import a template into Unbounce and, you know, throw up a broad match campaign on, on Google ads. But what really changes the business is where you get a really good commercial deal in place. And by commercial deal, I mean, sitting down with a partner and going, how can we attack this market differently? What can we offer that's not out there at the minute? Can we wrap this in a guarantee? Can we do, you know, this, that or the other? Can we say you're going to deliver this within two weeks and your competitors are saying four? Like, what can we do together to ramp this thing up? So that's that's where, you know, my time is is focused now to to make sure that, when I'm launching a campaign, it's like nothing else out on the on the market, or at least it's a me too, but just that little bit better, or it's got that bit more trust, it's got that extra guarantee about it. Um, <clears throat> and a huge bit is is obviously data analysis, you know, that, that's um, spending my time in in the the data, uh, like what devices are working, because keywords are not the same per device. They're the same thing, i.e., you know, you're sitting there typing in um, solar panels. But believe me, when you type in on one of these things versus the desktop, you're in a completely different mode. So, you know, we find desktop is a, a lot um, higher uh, downstream conversions. You'll get a lot more leads off mobiles, but the quality is not going to be as good. The, the revenue per lead is not going to be as great off a mobile. In That's a broad brush stroke in most um, scenarios versus your desktop. So... We split out campaigns, you know, in depending on certain factors and how we how we think the the intent of the keywords going to be as well. I just uh, jump in quickly. How many slides you got to go, mate? Because it might be time to take a few. I'll just cherry pick a few questions, I, and then how long have we got to go? You reckon? Mm. About not halfway. Much. Yeah, we've not got not got too Six much. Left. Yeah. All right, cool. Let me just ask a few questions and we'll come to the rest of them at the end. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, interest to see how you keep track of the client sales. It's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I have prerequisites and I do due diligence before I get in bed with anyone. Um, so one of the things is they must have a CRM. If they don't, we'll put one in, go high level or whatever it is. Um, we have to have access to our cohorted leads. So i.e. the leads that we create and and um, as, a, as a partnership, we have to be able to see them in real time. Um, you know, there's no emailing a lead and then send me a spreadsheet at the end of the week saying how we got on. Um, none of that I need to see in real time, any time that I want, I want to log in and see what's happening with that lead. Um, so that's just part of the setup and the transparency that has to be done. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Slavko is asking who is covering the ad spend. I think you were uh, you chatted about that. That it depends on the deal you're doing. Sometimes you'll cover it if it's a mature market. You know what your leads are like, etc. But if you're going into a newer market, you might do a deal where the client pays the ad spend. Right. I guess it depends on the situation. Correct? Exactly. Exactly that. Okay. All right. Um, how are you relying on them to determine what the profit is? The gross profit is. Uh, so I have, um, I, I break down their business model. So that's part of my due diligence. So I'll go into them and it's about having a frank conversation. So we go, right, look, these are the average cost per click. Uh, if we get 10 of those clicks, we think we'll get two leads, say, what's your average close rate? Um, so if we can generate, um, you know, uh, 10 of those leads for you, you're going to close one of those leads. Okay, that's going to give us a customer acquisition cost of X. Then uh, what's the product value? What's your average sales value? So once we've got the average sales value and we know our customer acquisition cost, we can divide the two, look at the gross profit. Um, as simple as that. Yeah. So from my experience, like you'll go back and forth and negotiate and you'll find an, an average cost they're willing to pay per sale. And they're just happy to pay it and there's no arguing after you come to that figure. Yep. Um, uh, how can you ensure reporting sales? Um, so uh, I use it. Uh, um, so it's good to see Anthony Virgin on here from Lead Byte. Um, he said, congratulations. I know others that have made it work like this, but in my experience, working with 500 plus clients using our software, this arrangement is few and far between requires trust and transparency on both sides and capital. 
Um, of course, if anyone on this chat has traffic, has a brand and is generating leads, but needs buyers to scale, I stand for an, an email. To, <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Thanks for your time, Lawrence. Um, uh, are the margins different on your own sites when you're not the lead and they lease or not the partner brand where they, I'm quite sure of that, what that question means. Yeah, Do so you understand that? Yeah. So, so are the margins that I want to take different if it's coming through my brand? Um, yes. Um, I will change the, the it's, it's about finding out what's fair. You know, every time that I sit with a client, I go, my job today is to find out what's fair. And if this campaign stacks in terms of, are you good enough at converting the leads? And can we get uh, customers in at a, an acquisition cost that makes sense? If all of those things start to line up, we then go, right, well, what's fair? You know, okay, you've got, uh, although there's that gross profit, you're telling me that it costs you an absolute fortune to install this thing. Okay, then I need to, you know, be a bit more lenient on my margins and, you know, take that into consideration because we're quite, you know, we're uh, quite lean in terms of that. You know, it doesn't doesn't cost us a lot in, in terms of, you know, infrastructure or uh, manpower to, to, to do this. So, um, it's about negotiating what's fair and reasonable and then what we think we can get as well. You know, we're, we're in business. We're not yeah. a chap. So. Yeah. Um, Jazz asking, um, how do you safely transition into a paper sale profit arrangement? And I, I think I can ask, answer this one. If you've got clients, just ask them. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not really that complicated. If you're there, if you they're your clients and you've been working with them and they know like and trust you if you approach them in a way where you want to turn it into you know more of a performance-based deal where you want to get in bed with them and you want to work with them you know you can start implementing ai you can help them with their contact rates this is music to their ears do you know what i mean rather than just being a, a cost you can be a partner and and usually it just comes from asking i mean that's how i have done it over the years i don't know about you aren't yeah, the the ask is exactly right. And, you know, the, the thing that, you know, I, I hear a, a few times from my peers as well, you know, when they say, why do you want to change? Like, what what's wrong with the leads that we're already doing? It's like, well, no, there's an opportunity to grow this, but I'm I'm stuck at the glass ceiling of, of the cost per lead that you're willing to pay. And I don't want to keep coming back with my cap in my hand going, you know, I want more cost per lead. What I want to do is be able to um, actually go uncapped with a cost per lead and bring you more profit. You know, the, the glass ceiling is this imaginary thing that I'm not going to pay over 50 quid a lead, say, and your lead buyers go, I'm never going to pay over that. Where actually, if you could, if we could obliterate that, smash through the glass ceiling and switch to performance, he won't give a monkeys if he's paying 65 quid a lead, but making 200 quid a lead, you know, because they're, they're you're able to punch up above a couple of other competitors in the SERPs and, um, you know, get get that extra quality of, of you know, the keywords that are converting for them. So, um, yeah, this, yeah. this glass ceiling thing, a CPL is, is, is massive. And Paul's asked, he stated here that he couldn't do it until he had cash behind him. That's not true from my experience either. Um, a quick story this this happened to me um i had a, a guy from manchester that had seen my ads through my brand and he came down and uh, this was when i was first starting out and he took me out for a steak dinner and uh by the end of the, the dinner i just talked to him about the situation and said listen it's just me and i've got another guy we know how to generate leads but i can't risk you know ten thousand pounds a week on my credit card to generate you guys leads and by the end of the end of the meal i'd had a handshake agreement and a ten thousand pound per week invoice raised um the next day for every week and that went on for for years do you know what i mean so all you have to do is ask and good things can happen because leads are the lifeblood lifeblood of their business and they want to work with someone like us that knows what they're doing all right um all right let's crack on Cool. Um, so yeah, I was just talking about um, AI copywriting and using, you know, even Unbounce now has got a built-in tool. Um, I use chat GTP. I've got certain prompts that I use to, to um, you know, build landing pages to get my um, Google ads, uh, headlines, descriptions for my RSAs, et cetera. So, you know, it's just 
means that I can do something so much quicker than I used to be able to. And the language that it spits out is so much better than this dyslexic can as well. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the old way was, you know, I broader tried to do it all. I was doing native social SEO, Google search, you know, your website or mine for any niche. Like it was, you know, and now I'm like, no performance only google search one niche at a time and then you know um prop it up until you know there's either you get it right or you bail at the stop loss so i always go into it knowing that there's a stop loss um as well so um you know we'll we'll sit with a partner and go right you know at this point we shake hands and we go it didn't work um and yeah because of that shift you know lead qualities through the roof because I'm able to bid on the stuff that actually converts rather than the stuff that doesn't, um, which means I can demand higher percentage deals because my leads just kick everyone else out of the park. And, um, you know, I'm no longer worried about the cost per lead. Instead, I'm focused on profit per lead. So instead of pay per lead, I've switched it to profit per lead. You know, that that's the industry that I'm in now. I'm in the profit per lead industry. Um, I'll just wait. Another quick question. Yep. Um, do, do you, from your experience, do the clients understand that if you bid on a keyword that's 50 pounds per quick and you convert one in two, that that's better than, that, than bidding on a 20 pound per quick where you, where they only convert by 10%. Do they understand that? That, um, the, their eyes start to glaze over. Um, when I talk about the technicalities of it, but what they do understand is that I go, look. If you if you own uh you know a, a a store and 10 people walk in and you could choose the two people that are gonna buy based on data and you send your best salesperson to those two people, would you want that? Yes, is typically the answer. Okay, well that's what I can do, but it's just digital. So mm. I can I can select the the keywords, the device, the time of day, the this, that to present you the best customers and I want you to give those to your best sales agents and then we'll make some money together. Nice. Um, so, so yeah, so in profit per lead and, you know, I'm also building a huge database myself. I've got 300,000 people on that database. So, you know, I'm building up brand power um, I can cross sell up, sell to them without spending a penny on ads now. Um, you know, that that's all built in in the bank and it's you know it's a nice nice book to have and it's building an asset that will be sellable at some point you know um so you know always thinking about the you know the exit at some point from these and you can build up these little brands and exit multiple times so you could you know build up a little brand you could do you know for for solar or for roofing or for you know whatever the industry is and then you know sell that cash in from it build your next thing um, you know, there's, there's, there's people that will buy these, um, you know, these brands, um, especially if they've got a database behind them, you know, you could sell it to your, your, your partner that you've, you've partnered up with, you know, they, they might mm. want to it on themselves. Um, you know, that happens all the time, you know, um, money supermarket own loads of stuff. The group owns loads of, you know, um, sites. Uh, so it's the, you know, the same thing, you know, build it to a point where you can be acquired. Um, so three takeaways. Uh, that were the uh, the biggest wins for me. Um, back end deals that are no risk to you, but give you access to bigger slice of the profit. So whether that's you risking the ad spend if you've got that to risk, or whether that's um, you know doing deals with uh, clients that are willing to to front the ad spend. And you know you can start small. You know, hundred pound a day, five hundred pound a day, thousand pound a day. You know, I've got clients on um, where they're paying seven grand a day in certain you know markets now. Um, and you know, by the way, that their ad spend is not in my um uh two point five million profit. That that's separate. So the guys that are spending seven grand, you know, I'm not just turning that turning that over. So um mm. If you're running Google search ads, split your campaigns by devices. Like I said, it's different if you're on a mobile to a, a desktop. So just be mindful of that um, and think about, um, you know, device intent per keyword as well. And um, yeah, last one, become a profit center instead of a cost center. Change from the language from being cost per lead to profit per lead. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's that's it. Interesting. Okay, what's well, going to a little bit more question time? Mm. Um, 
I'll check. I think I had a question um, just then. Um, no, I've forgotten it. Um, oh, yeah, database for activation. So you've got your 300,000 like leads, right? And you lease the leads out for a month or something to your clients, and then you get them back to be able to send uh, an SMS out or an email to be able to offer them roofing if they're a sole client, etc. Have you yeah. dug much into this yet, or is it kind of a 2024 type job? Uh, so we've uh, we've just started with this, with um, uh, flipping some, um, well, when we're doing database activation for no contacts, um, we're working with a, another partner that that, um, that uh, dials, and we're also testing the uh, sales Android as well for database reactivation. Um, so we've got uh, we've got an absolute whale of a client um, for uh, for that and and flipping those. Um, then what we're also doing is looking at comparables. So I someone that inquired, for example, about life insurance. Um, they uh, have got every interest in potentially um, wanting health insurance or they've inquired about, um, you know, uh, solar panels. And then we, you know, we want to talk to them about other energy saving products. Um, so uh, we're just getting started on this, I'll be honest, but I know that it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be a good uh cherry on top for the for the rest of the business and it means that what i'm trying to do is build up a network of of different partners that we can co-introduce to each other so that you know we've got i've got this network where i can go you know i'm, I'm an introducer that's that's what i am i'm an introducer so um i will uh take that and go right you should speak to those because of this reason so um yeah i can see i can see big things for for that um in in the next year yep cool and uh i guess another question that hasn't popped up here right is google is there's a there's a ton of niches where you have to have a license right to be able to add to be able to run ads right you're obviously in some of these niches, but you're in some that don't require licenses. Can you just elaborate a bit more on that? Yeah. So um, what the the niches that I'm in or the the requirement for licenses? Yeah. So so for the average Joe blogs that doesn't have like, uh, let, let's say there's someone coming in here that does paper lead, paper lead has experience running Facebook ads, et cetera, and they want to start Google search. They mm. can't really go and build a site. Um, uh, my debt consolidation.com right and start yeah. running ads on Facebook. So that's just not going to happen. What what would you recommend these people do? So the the niches to hit you know you you've got the the air table um of of the you know the, the top niches it's all about what are the you, you really got to have a product that's over a grand. You know it needs to be a high ticket product. So it needs to be you know that that roofing, you know, let's take roofing, for example. Um, I would then go and write, how, how can we not be a generalist in the, in the roofing sector? So um, for example, in the U S there's, you know, there's obviously uh, loads of storms. So could we be, uh, could we build a niche site for um, storm roofing repairs in, I, I have no idea what state has, has storms, Texas. I'll go with that. The Midwest. Yeah. I have no idea, but anyway, um, so then you go, right, when you're then calling up a, um, uh, you know, a prospective partner, you can go, well, we're a specialist in storm protect, um, storm roofing repairs in Texas. You know, we can bring these leads to you on a, you know, a, a no risk deal. Does that sound something that you, you'd be interested in? And all of a sudden those conversations, are, well, yeah, or, you know, it's no, we can't handle any more at the moment. You know, uh, so those conversations are so much easier to have once you've got a uh, a niche within a niche of um, you know. Mm. So that that's where I would I would start if I was going straight into Google Ads, and then obviously you can you can go broader from that. But I like to build up these niche websites um, because then again these they're little assets that you can flip and sell as well. Um, but mm. yeah, I, I would start with that sort of. How can you just yeah now? in in the google search as well because if you think 
people are searching and if they just see roofingusa.com it's like well okay it's yeah but if you if you're you know searching for um you know storm repair roofing and you've got storm repair roofing.com um why would you not click on that like it's all about mm. what can you do to to get that to get that click sell the click first you know through the brand mm. uh, and then mm. and then build it out from there and you are like let's say some of these people that are more advanced that do have i don't know clients in some of these regulated industries mm -hmm. you're able to approach them and then ask if you can build a trading style of their website on a performance-based deal and then you can get around the issues with getting mm -hmm. ads approved and all of that type of stuff that's yeah, a nice they, angle that i haven't thought of yeah they can they can sign off your your google ads account as well um you know and it's not double serving so a lot of people think well no you're going to get done for double serving you're not because um you're a separate business you're a separate legal entity and you're just being signed off for compliance by a third party um so it's it's not going to hit double serving either yeah uh a few people asking about contracts so i take it you do have some pretty airtight contracts um that you get yeah. everyone to sign before you get started yeah so um uh some yes some no so i'm i'm a I'm a believer in a gentleman's handshake as much as I am tight contracts as well, but I will walk into some places and be like, well, I need a contract in this place. Um, in others, I'll be, you know, I'll be quite happy that, uh, and this is typically where I've worked with someone for a while first, you know, if, if it's a cold new partner, I will contract them. Um, but otherwise, you know, if I've, and this is where I've flipped some clients from, from paper lead into performance I've not I've not put a contract in place because I'm we've we've been in business for a long time together um but otherwise yeah, yeah new partners yeah uh, I've got a mm, 20 odd page contract that I've had written that's cost me a lot of money to um to to sort of watertight that up oh um is there a minimum of niche searches you look at before starting a new niche a uh, minimum what sorry searches per month Oh, oh. Search per month. Um, it depends on how um, niche the the product is. You know, typically I'm in the the higher search impression stuff. But for example, where you've got um, really niche stuff like you know plastic surgery or you know things like that, where the searches are lower, but you know the um, the back end is is worth it because it's a really high ticket product. Um, then then I'll go and enter it. But yeah, I'm I'm not going to build um, something for just solar panels, Northampton, you know, uh, and and the searches are a hundred a month. No, you're never yeah. going to make money of that. You've got to then think of right. You've got to take a step back and go. Well, how can I build a network of installers across the country and deliver you know a hundred leads a day to multiple partners across you know across the country? Um, you might you might start with just you know a particular bit of it or one state or you know. But yeah, you you definitely need to be able to minimum for me is ten leads a day. So if you you know if you sort of do your mass and work it backwards and you have got a conversion rate of twenty percent, how many impressions do you need to click? To you know you can work it backwards to then to then get to your 10 a day cool all right well if you move on to the next slide and we've got we can have more questions about this right um so obviously lawrence came to me with what he's doing here and he, he there is an offer within this webinar but there's only going to be an offer if we get enough type of interest in in what we're planning on doing here, right? So tell us about what you're like just broadly what you're thinking about putting together, Lawrence, as far as like <laughs> what you what you're able to share with people, um, landing pages, uh, you know, split testing, you know, what what will this look like and and you know, I'm going to throw my hands up and say we haven't thought too much about this yet, but it is something we're thinking about putting together together. So, yeah, what, what do you got, Lawrence? What do you think you can provide people that want to learn from you? So, uh, number one, there, there is a, a ton of courses that you could go out there on Google Ads, right? You could go to you could go to Google and take their course, their best practices course. Um, all you're going to learn to do is how to 
spend money very quickly. Um, you know, even, even Google now offer these um, uh, these forty five pound sessions that you can pay for with a a Google rep um that will tell you to go on pmax broad broad match and you know it, it's just utter bollocks um so i think you know what what's important for me is that uh or, or you know my my training would be how to optimize for a performance deal which is a completely different thing to optimizing for a cost per lead deal like the ways of how you set up the account the offers the hooks the you know everything that sort of embodies that that marketing message is something that i've honed in so that i've got absolute clarity on how i'm going to break this market down put something new into the market and then advertise that to attract the right quality of client that i can you know have a a partnership with that is going to make us you know both money um okay so so that's one thing and then the, the sort of tangibles are I, I don't know how many a b tests i've run hundreds and hundreds of a b tests to get my landing pages correct in terms of what should be where um what you what order things should be in um you know all, all of that stuff uh so that can be you know that can be shared all the uh how i use ai to um you know train my offshore VAs to write all the um, ads, et cetera, for me, um, all the tech stack of, you know, how we, how we build and deliver things um, and then how to structure uh, the commercial deals. I think we could, you know, um, share uh, how to structure them, how to position them um, and equally how to, how to go and get them. And it's, it's a no brainer offer for, for, you know, put that in front of the right people. It's just, it's just a no brainer. So this, these um, kind of niche sites that you're thinking about uh, that works for you, you've, you've literally got like some templates for homepage landing pages for the different kind of sub type of sub keywords or whatever. Thank you pages. That's, mm -hmm. have you got them built on a SAF on a SAS uh, software or how would someone come in, be able to get that done, downloaded and up and running, showing this site off to potential clients relatively quickly? Yeah, so we're um, we're currently uh, we use Webflow and we use uh, a few other other tools and we're um, going through over the next few weeks, actually, of consolidating our tech stack so that we've got uh, because as a developer, I've been very used to I can do it, but then my team can't. Right. So uh, so what I've done now is gone. Right. We need uh, the templates that someone can just click and install. They can do that on, you know, Webflow or go high level or, you know, whatever it is that that's, um, you know, that, that we need. And then, you know, here's how to put the the content into it. Here's how to go and write the content. Here's how to put it into the template. And then equally, here's the landing pages that you need to make because you've done the keyword research, put them into, you know, different cohorts of keywords and you understand that you need a this, this and a this landing page and here are the templates for them here's the uh the sort of uh walkthrough of how to install them and then here's a, a form builder to to build the you know the multi-step um uh system to uh to walk them through the stages which i think you know people will be used to leads hook um there's also hay flow you know there's lots lots of these form builders out there so i think a lot of people already have that sort of um tech um this would be more about how we um, position the the offer, the message, and equally what needs to be said on the landing page and what landing pages we need. Um, mm. it, it, it's not so much. I, I don't care if it's built on Go High Level, Webflow, WordPress. It, like I used to get stuck in all that stuff. It, it really doesn't matter, you know, as long as it loads and it's pretty quick at loading, you know, because Google will rank you on load speed. Um, it it doesn't matter, and you can get just stuck in all of that um you know so to get unstuck we'll just choose one platform and uh get on with it to be honest you know i like to gsd mm -hmm. so this is more of a like a business model that you're teaching here so we figure out how to build a site um that we can use to to uh, reach out to clients with we then build the site we leverage it and then we we, we you teach people how to negotiate the deal have the contracts in place, get the money in from the client for the ad spend or whatever, and then optimize based on the mini site that you've got um, 
and you can do that multiple times with multiple clients, right? It's not just one client you're trying to do this oh, yeah. with. You can bring multiple multiple clients on. Okay. Exactly, and and it's the uh, the data analysis piece. So what what should we be analysing? How do we get that data back from the client? How do we ingest that data? What do we then look at? What performance indicators do we want to look at? How do we look at our our cost per lead, our revenue per lead, our profit per lead? How do we split that out? You know, what dimensions and metrics are we looking at across there? Um, you know, we can um, share the Google Sheets that that I use to, um, uh, to to do that. So you can just plug in your data and you know look at the the particular um, you know things that you need to to. It's like you know if you've ever had your car chipped and you go in and they've got this like ECU map and you you go right. I need this bit and I need this bit. I'm going to bid down on there and uh, it's exactly like that. So that we've got you know, these performance Google sheets that I can just go in and go, right, I need to stop bidding on that particular keyword on that device or this particular thing, because I can see the full 360 picture through through the analytics. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Um, yeah, so we are thinking about putting a small group together here. It will be no more than 10. I've just put my email address in. If you're interested in learning more, reach out to me via email and just ask. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, is there any kind of like type of student that you'd kind of want Lawrence to be able to start with? Is there some people that are paying on you just not quite there yet? You need to like get a bit more experience and then we can talk later or is it for everyone or is this is the people that have already got clients? You know, what, what are your thoughts? So I think the you know the the quickest wins would be if you've um, you, you've either got some clients that we could flip um you know into a, into a performance deal that would you know that would that would be a quick win um if there's you know some people that are just literally starting out and they've got no clients uh they they need to go out and and get that offer in front of clients first and then then we can start building something so there's you know maybe a two week lag there of going and getting to because you you know i could spend the next three days on the phone and i'll have two or three people you know interested in the deal so it, it can be done quick um you would uh really sort of be able to to self start in terms of the um the tech side would be would be helpful i you sort of you maybe have used go high level you know sort of how to you know build you know drag things around and build things and integrate some stuff and you can you can figure some integration stuff out on your, your yourself or you've got a you know a technical partner to do that um yeah. you know i think otherwise we'd get bogged down in tech and that's you know that can be easily solved with some freelancers on upwork so um you know that that's not sort of what the course is about um the course is much more about the you know the commercials and making sure that we're getting the you know the right leads in front of the right people at the right time and how we do that through google search you know so it would be really in depth on on google search like I'll t I'll take yeah. you, you know, uh, open an account to, you know, how how you do keyword research, the you know the whole the whole sort of walkthrough of that. Cool. Will this work better in local market niches or large niches like solar? <clears throat> uh, so, interestingly, solar is is local and and uh, national at, at the same time. So, uh, I I think this will work anywhere where you you can generate five to 10 leads per day where the end product price is north of a thousand you know th this won't yeah. work where you've got a you know a, a, a hundred pound product at the end of it and you, you're trying to you know acquire customers for two three ten pounds it's just not going to work you know you, you need you need to be able to um you know uh sell a thousand pound product plus and that you know that's the client's product so yeah your home services oh. stuff Will, will work really well claims you know services claims surgery dentists um what else you've got where there's no compliance so we can start going quickly yeah yeah you know and even um uh I, I i do something for for a mate of mine that sells sells wedding rings um and uh you know his wedding rings are north of north of a couple of grand and he does a champagne appointment you know and we we do we do that and he's got a few different branches you know across the uk um that works well you know so it, it can really you know mm. anything where it's a, a service that's got north of a grand i think we can you know we, we can we can go get them yeah and how much uh, generally 
is the budget that the client needs to pass on for these performance based deals? Like what what do they need to commit? Otherwise it's just not worth talking to them. Yeah. Um well, you know, to uh, where I'm at now is, uh, you know, I, I don't get excited about anything unless it makes 10 grand profit for our agency a month. So uh, that's where, you know, I want to be to and I'll work my figures back from there. You might not be at there. You might be excited by two grand. So, you know, wherever you're at and wherever you want to get to, don't think that, you know, you're going to jump 10 hurdles all at once. You know, it's about getting you to the next next level. So. Um, I think, you know, it's where, you know, where do you want to be in terms of your, your profit and then working it out backwards from there. And, and, you know, I've got a few very simple spreadsheets that I call does it stack to, to work that out. Um, so that would be something that we'd be, we'd be doing as well. Cool. Matt has asked, I live in Denmark. There's 5 million people here. Is that too small? My thoughts are that this is a huge opportunity to someone in Denmark or some of these uh, kind of Scandinavian countries or countries in Europe that probably five years behind what we're all doing over here in the UK and the US and stuff. So it is an absolute blue, uh, what do they call it? Open blue ocean or whatever out there, Mads. Um, yeah. So I would not focus on trying to do anything in any other country apart from your home, your home, home country, 100%. You'll kill it. You'll kill it. Um, and five million people. Uh, well, you know, you you put five million people in in a you know that's going to fill a you know fill a, a huge amount of stadiums. You only need you know yeah. a few rows of that stadium to buy something north of a grand, and yeah. you're making money. Exactly. Um, local search volume is low. You'd be surprised. You would be very surprised. Will this work for real estate agents if they work with buyers or sellers? Real estate's a good one. Mm. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, equally like um, you know, buy homes for cash. Uh, yeah, real estates where you've got um, you know a, a, an estate agent. The, the only the only thing with that is you're waiting a long time for that to convert. Mm -hmm. Really, what you want is a four to six week conversion window from the lead to the sale being done, so that you can get paid out. Um, otherwise, yeah. what you need to do, if it is a longer, um, you need to take a smaller percentage, but charge a fee based on a different um, conversion point. So it's not sales. So you're not, uh, it might be um, when they sign on the dotted line, you know, they, they you sign them up to, um, to sell their house. So they've signed that letter of authority. That's when you get paid, not when they sell the house. Yeah. Mads is still asking good questions, right? So let's say they're going after painting in brighton for example um would you have would you build a painting website out that's national and bring on clients that have a decent budget in each city is that how it would work yeah so the, the way i structure the ad account would be um so that we can um we can target locally have a national brand and then because I want to replicate that. So I want to build one brand, one um, Google ad account, and then I want to replicate that. So I then go, so then I'm on the phone going, um, you know, to someone in Norwich, uh, look, we've, we've absolutely smashed it for this guy in Brighton. Here's a video testimonial. No, you know, Dave's doing really well from it. You know, he's booked 10 more appointments or, you know, whatever it is. And we've got then, you know, it's from the same source. We're going to give you the same type of leads from the same website. Would you like some of that? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So it does work for the smaller cities as well. You just you just need more clients, I guess, to make yeah. it more profitable. But it's a good yeah. place to start. Right, cool. Um, we've got some mail sent, mail sent, which is good. Um, uh, don't think there's much many other questions at the moment. Any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Lawrence, have you got anything else to add? Um, no, it, you know, we, we've sort of covered oh, a lot of ground. Yep, Karen. Ben's asked a question. Sorry, mate. Um, ben, 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 Ben. What percentage of these rev share deals that you start would say end in success failure? It's a good question. Well, yeah, definitely. So um, I, I would say that... Oh, 
I'm just trying to think of the ones that we've we've lost over over time and and why they've they've lost for you know for for different reasons. I, once I've got something to work, I hardly lose lose a client. You know, uh, the the only ones that I've lost a, a client on is because there's been a change in the market. So, um, for example, equity release went to crap. Um, you know, it was just the Bank of England just shoved up interest rates and that that's really an outside factor that just the whole market just nearly ceased to exist overnight so um typically yeah. you've got something working for them to switch you off is nearly impossible um so you you've uh you know you, you've got each other in in proper partnership at, at that point you don't you don't yeah. tend to lose anyone yeah cool with the um would the training also include a flow for the client to follow up the lead? Is, do you work on the client with that type of stuff? Yeah. So the the success program that I talked about earlier, client success program, um, yeah, we'd include the SOPs for that. Um, so you would, um, we've got a whole like lead flow that we um, that we do from you know contact to uh, to no contact, the different terminations, and then um, <clears throat> I call it the accelerated growth method where. We then look at each of those pots individually and then go, right, what message, what can we send to each one of those? So all of that, um, yeah, would be in there. Cool. Um, John's just asking out of interest, what got your accounts banned last time? Sorry, what were? What got your accounts banned? Uh, so I incorrectly set up um, my Google Ads accounts to um have the same payment profile and an advertiser can only have one google ad account so i got uh the rug ripped royally under me for a, a mm -hmm. stupid mistake of my own um you know my understanding was that i could you know for each different website have a different google ads account and be the same business but you can't uh you have to yeah. be in the same google ads account with one pay one payment uh id Oh, and Ben, this just asked again, how many get off the ground, right? So let's say you've got your niche website, you go to a new uh, solar company in Manchester and you say, we've got this thing. Um, listen, I can supply your leads from it, but I think I want to really go into partnership with someone up in Manchester because it's working so well down in Brighton. Um, but for that to happen um, on a per performance deal, we're going to have to share some of the risk and and all I'm asking for is the ad spend, right? And in return for that, I'll be able to, um, you know, do everything for free, everything for free. And we only get paid on the, on, the, on the performance of the deal. So out of like deals that start and you get that first 10,000 a month or whatever they ask for, for ad spend, how many continue on to be a client for, for good, for good? Uh, the the majority of them uh in you know i've been doing it what uh this nine 12 months now um in in this way um i've maybe lost 15 percent of the clients for varying wow. reasons so everyone is awesome. stuck um and the and the reason it's stuck is because we're we're sharing the risk so with some that go well you know i'm, I'm not going to pay the ad spend and i'll go well let's share the ad spend 50 50 um but then i want yeah. more profit so there's always there's always outs it's just where does someone's risk want to sit and someone's risk appetite might be zero and you're you're you know they've not really got the appetite for growth that you want you know you want someone that's got um appetite for growth and that's got to be the right company um so it, it's about jumping into bed with the right people, um, which is where yeah. I do a lot of due diligence to to start with. And my my sales guys hate me for it because I'm like, no, I don't want to work with them. Um, I've, I've just seen it all before, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I was going to say something else. No, I can't remember. Um, okay, that's us. That for Ben. Um, Oh, okay. What else is that? Uh, I think you, you know, on top of transparency. Sorry, go ahead. So uh, I just think, you know, a lot of people are asking about, you know, what percentage of deals stick and, you know, everyone here I think is worried about risk um, and, you know, will this pay ROI? You know, will this pay back? Will this thing, you know, 
uh, you know, do what, you know, am I able to replicate what I'm doing basically? And it's that, that yeah. risk, um, you know, that, that risk. So, you know, what, what we're, we're looking for is, is some people that, you know, understand risk because risk is everywhere, you know, in business. And it's about mitigating that as, as much as possible. And um, that's where, you know, I, I can help, uh, you know, versus, you know, just going and getting a, a different course or doing something, you know, even if you don't, you, you're going to end up doing something, right? And there's going to be risk involved in that. So your your next year, you're going to end up doing something, right? So and there's there's risk mm. there. So it's like, how do we how do we mitigate that risk as much as possible together? So that that's really what um you know with with the sort of the finance background that um that you know I've I've got over the last few years as well that's my mindset is always like how are we mitigating risk for people um so that that's something that we'll you know really really go into as well yeah definitely um i think this is perfect for clients uh, for students or people listening to this that have clients that are already generating leads for them that have that have deeper pockets and probably just haven't been approached on a performance deal, all right? This could literally overnight change your agency if you approach things the right way. So it's um, it's more, this is not like a kind of side hustle kind of course or anything like this. This is going to transform the way that you operate your agency. And the reason this works, you know, is going to work so well, in my opinion, is because, and why it's worked so well for Lawrence is because these are search ads. They're the best type of leads that you can get, which is very different to kind of make this work on Facebook ads. Okay. The secret source is the, the, the methodology, this high quoted in my email, the hybrid back backend deal, that's the secret source. And also Lawrence's many, many, many and thousands and hundreds and thousands worth of ad spends on the type of ads that work and the type of landing pages that work. And when you combine those two things together, I think it's going to be very hard to, to lose. All right. Um, can you see this partnership model working in auto sales repair or home auto insurance? If it's um, over a K? Yeah, repair, I'm not I'm not sure about, you know, because, you know, getting your tire fixed, no. Uh, but maybe things like um, car wrapping, you know, that that, you know, things like that could work um because that's going to yeah. be up to a grand so yeah anything that's high ticket with with auto could work my flipping lights come on <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> joe's just asked he has the whale opportunity with an annuities financial advisor company like these guys make a ton of money right but it's harder to get your ads live on adwords um yep. so you would have to google ads. sorry i've been calling it adwords for for this week yeah, and i've been getting slated for it <laughs> but um you know, this is that would be a prime opportunity to approach them with like a comparison website that's in their brand or something, right? You you would present the idea to them, leverage their uh, license, and then you're really onto something. It's just, yeah, I, I like the way you you're doing that, Lawrence. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's an it's just an easy in with them, and it and it also it works really well with the compliance departments because it's not their brand. Although they're signing it yeah. off, you can you can just be that little bit more towards the grey than squeaky clean brand over there can be. Yeah. What about loans and finance? Like I know Chris, Chris has been in my community for ages, and I know he's got some whale business loan clients or has done in the past. Would it work for business loans with the same yeah. theory? Yeah, biz, yeah, business loans, um, not personal loans. There's not enough commission in it. Um, not in the UK, yeah. anyway. you know, there's less than like a hundred quid in most, most personal loans and, and it's mainly, you know, done online. Um, but where you need to speak to an advisor. So you know, anyone, anywhere that you need to speak to someone to do that thing typically is north of a thousand quid, you know? Uh, so um, yeah, I think business loans have got huge back end commissions. Um, so, you yeah. know, absolutely that will, that will work. Um, you know, business loans, pensions, annuities, drawdowns, um, IFAs, uh, you know, all of, all of that side of things. Um, yeah. Nice. Very clever. I like it. I like it. Um, and, and let's say someone comes on and they've got clients, um, and they they've, 
position this offer to them and the client says yes, how quickly do you think it would be before you're starting to, you know, hit 10K per month profit? Like I would say, like from my experience, if they're willing to spend 10K, then you want to be making 10K, 100% margin on what they're doing, right? Is that accurate? So uh, it depends on the product. So, you know, with with some of uh, some of the products that I'm running, I'm, I'm like, I'm up towards that that 100%. I wouldn't say I'm uh, doubling money in terms of my profit, my takeaway everywhere. Um, but I think um, if you're, you, you want to get to the campaign having one pound in, two pound out, you know, that that's that's yeah. a good barometer. Although you don't take that yeah. two pounds, you know, you're taking a share of that pound profit. Not for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So conservatively, you can get your your client to spend 10K uh, a month on ads, on Google ads. You'd want to be taking 5K profit out hmm. of that. Is that kind of a rough, rough figure? Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. Um, again, depending on their um, how much their thing costs them to deliver. Uh, but yeah, yes, you, you want to be taking, especially if you're risking that ad spend. So yeah, you'd want to be, you'd want to be doing that. If you're not risking the ad spend, you want to be aiming between, you know, 15 and 25% of, uh, oh, yeah. of okay. okay. Um, it just depends where the risk sits. Yeah. What's um, the, uh, what's your biggest spend client? How much are they giving you on ad spend? Do you mind sharing or just uh, what, what's your good stuff? So I've got um, some clients spending nearly 10 grand a day. Wow. Wow. And I've got That's a couple cool, of those. Man. Yeah. Cool. Um, then what I'm, you guys you know, want... I'm spending, I must be spending, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 to 15 grand a day on my own stuff as well. Wow. No wonder you've got some good air miles. Um, Chris has just asked, where can we sign up? Um, Dan got wardrobe. We haven't actually got an outline for anything just yet, Chris. We're just seeing if there's going to be enough um, people interested in doing this with Lawrence. All right. But send me an email, dan.wardrobe, and we'll scope it out and figure out what this what this looks like. Um, yeah, but I love this. All righty. Anything else, mate, or any other questions? Will there be a replay? Yes, it's coming out next Tuesday as a premiere on, on YouTube. We've been going for an hour and 40, so I think it might be time to wrap it up. Yeah, I'm uh, dry mouth. Um, I've run out of a big water bottle. So. <laughs> same, same. I think the lights are telling you something. It's time to head home as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for your time. Um, how about a course to become a Lawrence? <laughs> well, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we're putting together, Jeremy. It will be a small group of people where we're taking them and holding their hand for this whole whole journey. So that's what the plan is. But as I said, we don't know if there's enough interest yet. Um, all right, cool. Uh, do you need to change things a lot or is it more stable once you get a great model? I think um, Lawrence said that it just keeps on ticking over once you get it dialed in. Yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely like once you've got it there, it, it just, I, I literally, some of them I, I don't need to check for, for days and then i'll go in and like have a look if there's anything odd happening but we have like alarm bell systems to be like well something crazy has happened you know we've got performance envelope yeah. if something steps outside of that our slack gets alerted and then i'll go and have a look at it otherwise it's just uh business as usual nice nice um sorry just had an sms come in um rajul I've said, uh, good to see you man i haven't seen you in ages rajul actually was one of my students he made a big exit with one of his brands um, so it's good to have you here as well, mate. This could be good for you. Um, there's no course, Brian. Um, you send me an email, dude. You've got my, me on Facebook or whatever. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, all right. Well, I think we might call it a day. I'm getting pretty tired. Oh, so is everyone else. Lawrence, thanks so much for your time. This is awesome as always. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Matt, thank you. And I'll speak to you guys later. Take care. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the webinar with Lawrence. It's been pretty cool to see how he's leveraged performance-based deals with Google Ads, okay, the best quality leads that you can that you can sell, all right? It's worked supremely well for him. He's made a ton of money from it. We are putting a small group together 
um, over a six to eight week training where we're teaching you how to do this from start to finish. Email me at dan.wardrope at flexdigital.com if you're intrigued. We've already sold two out of the 10 spots before this recording's gone live. So if you're interested, you better hurry up and email me. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.